as we tap into that magnificent energy of the divine, let us all take a moment to reflect on the many amazing things that has brought us to this place today, to this place where we can celebrate love. 
where we can listen to the messages that are meant for us and take that energy and cascade it with every interaction we have where we can carry that self-love. We can be that love and just relish in that amazing feeling of oneness. I am so thankful. And so it is. And so it is. Ah, good morning. Good morning. And on this beautiful day of love, celebrating love in so many different ways, we get to honor the many different sacred paths and the many different spiritual teachers. So now we begin the ceremony that celebrates this oneness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths come from the one universal presence that we call spirit. And this morning we've got Bob joining me on the stage as our candle lighter. Thank you. One of the practitioners I had a chance to glow up with. Yes. Oh, it's the day of love. We're spreading it today. So, of course, not only are we celebrating love, we are still continuing with our season of peace. And this week we are focusing on Christianity. So I've got a quote from St. Francis. It's a prayer, actually. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And of course, our second candle today is our healing candle of love. So we invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anybody, any person, any situation that you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. Yes. And now that our flames of faith are fully lit, we move forward into our celebration, recognizing and realizing that all paths lead to God. Thank you so much, Bob. Appreciate you. All right, now everybody gets to join in on our purpose, mission, and vision statement. I can hear you from home as long as you give me that extra boost. So our purpose, our reason for being. We awaken and inspire love and oneness. Yes, yes. And our vision, what do we want to create or become? We are an empowered, uplifting, inclusive community. And our mission, how are we going to do this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. Yes, excellent. And our sacred reading from today actually comes from the Science of Mind magazine. It was the Divine Feminine Edition. Happens to match my outfit, just going to say. It was meant to be. <laughs> uh, and it's from Ernest Holmes himself. So, <sighs> The answer to every problem already exists in the mind of God. And you are in the mind of God. And the mind of God is flowing through you in this minute. I'm gonna read that one more time. The answer to every problem already exists in the mind of God. And you are in the mind of God. And the mind of God is flowing through you in this minute. Now back to our music.
I, I definitely have goosebumps. That was beautiful. Good morning, and welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. Yes, where we celebrate love and only love, because that's what today is all about. Ah, my name is Stevie Lanier. I almost forget to mention that every single time, so I'm on it today. My name is Stevie, one of the recent practitioners that has been licensed at this wonderful center. Yes, thank you, thank you. And uh, we've got a lot going on, so this is the time where you might want to pull out your calendar if you're anything like me, uh, maybe grab a sticky note, or um, just make a mental note of anything that catches your ear because we are absolutely practicing our truth here, which is all about teaching spiritual transformation with grace and joy. So um, first things first, we've got some book studies coming up, which is pretty exciting. Um, they're gonna be starting this month. So Tuesdays, uh, starting on the 23rd, so yeah, coming up here pretty soon. And then we also have one starting next month. So March 2nd will be the first date for the second book club. Uh, so the two books that they're going to be studying is um, Being Peace and The Book of Joy. So sounds right up our alley. Um, the next thing, super exciting. If I'm reading this right, please correct me if I'm wrong. Foundations? Are we doing an online foundations? Yeah. Holy cow, this is amazing. I have heard actually quite a few people ask about this. So it's going to be starting and um, we've actually got Kaleem teaming up with Bob, our very own Bob to teach this class. I am so excited because that is a dynamic duo if I've ever seen one. So that's gonna be exciting. And it is a, a class that's a prerequisite for the core curriculum classes that we offer later. So this is one that you don't want to miss. And it really covers all of the groundwork for spirituality. So even if you taken it before, um, take it again. <laughs> it's just one of those classes you can't go wrong with. Um, other than that, we also have Revealing Wholeness, and that's going to be starting on Tuesdays in March, so from March 9th through April. And um, I think that that one is going to be by Tony Shannon, so that's going to be really exciting too. Along with our classes, we have our ongoing meditation events. So they're weekly, they're via Zoom, so anybody can join. We're making it super easy access. So that is what's coming up. Um, before I pass over music to Jessica, um, I'm just going to invite everybody to get comfortable for the speech today by our lovely Reverend Dawn, and that's gonna be all about love is in the air. So that'll be exciting, but special music. Thank you, take us away.
We are so, so fortunate. I, I don't think there are many singers can sing that song. And what a beautiful, beautiful job. Thank you so much, Jessica. What a range. Wow. Well, good morning. <sighs> Thank you all for uh, joining us today. Welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. It is indeed an honor to be invited into your homes on this day. Thank you for, for having us this day. What an honor. Today is Valentine's Day, so I want to wish everyone a very happy, happy Valentine's Day. Whatever your activities are uh, today, let's know that they're all just grounded in love. Happy Valentine's Day. The title of my talk is Love is in the Air. Now, for those of you that have been following me, and note that I have been doing a series, you could call it a, What We Believe. And I talk about some of the things that we believe in this philosophy. Um, started off with the basic premise that we believe in God. And, and each week I add a little bit more to it. Today I'm going to talk about the nature of that infinite presence that we call God. And in this, we believe in the eternal goodness the eternal loving kindness and the eternal givingness of life to all. Again, we believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. It was stated by Ernest Holmes back in 1927 the way I interpret this, the way this strikes in my heart, is that that infinite presence, that divine creative force that has created all of everything, is for us. That force is there to help us, to guide us in this thing that we call life. It is not a, a judgmental thing. It doesn't sit up there and judge us as being right or wrong. It's not a, a punishing thing. It's there to beat us up if we do something wrong. Not at all. Not at all. It is there to support us and to guide us and to help us. So you may wonder, well, Don, Reverend Don, you have said that this force is infinite. It is infinitely powerful. And if it is for us, then why do we have misery in the world? Why do we have war? Why do we have separation? Why do we have lack and limitation and bondage? Man's inhumanity to man. Why do then we have all of that? It's a real good question. And answers could take a long, long time. But I'll give you one snippet today of my philosophy on that and how it all fits together. And that is that part of the reason for that in the world is that we are free. We have to be free for all of this to work. If we are nothing but puppets dangling at the strings of the great marionette in the sky, then none of it means anything. And we are not. We are free. And we are free to choose bondage over freedom. We are free to choose lack and limitation over prosperity and abundance. We are free to choose isolation over togetherness and oneness. We are free to choose disease over health. Oh boy, I can hear that one rolling, all right? Well, I didn't wake up this morning and decide to be sick. I didn't wake up and decide that I'm going to be poor today. No, a lot of the decisions that affect us are not conscious decisions. They are subconscious or unconscious decisions. But you may say, yeah, but I, I didn't even have a subconscious thought about that today. I had no unconscious thought about that today. Well, that may be true and it may not be true because there are a lot of things that go into what we think in our minds at any given time. On September 24th, 1942, Ernest Holmes gave a radio broadcast. And in this broadcast, he talked about four adjustments that we can make in order to facilitate a more harmonious life, to a life that is more meaningful, more profound. 
in what we do. Something that brings more of life itself to us. And these four adjustments, as he calls them, are these. First of all, adjustment of self. Secondly, adjustments of family. Thirdly, adjustments to society. And lastly, adjustments to the universe. So we'll look at those one at a time this morning, starting off with adjustments of the self. Perhaps the single biggest um, thing that I encounter when working with people as they go through the messy parts of life is that people have an almost inborn lack of self-esteem. So many people have such a difficult time recognizing their own worth. When they're presented with problems, it's always, oh, I'll, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not old enough. I'm too old. I'm too short. I'm too fat. I'm too bald. I'm too this. I'm not enough that. And those are the things that we carry around. And we don't wake up in the morning deciding that I'm going to beat myself up today because I'm bald. No, it's something that's playing a hidden tape in the back that's saying I'm not going to get that job because I don't have the right education. I'm not going to get that thing that I want because I don't have something within me that is necessary. I have the wrong background. And then the real ringer is, oh, I don't deserve that. I shouldn't get that because I don't deserve it. I don't deserve that new car. I don't deserve that thing that I want in my life. I don't deserve a loving relationship because we've been told, oh, you did that wrong. You're never going to have that relationship. And we buy into it and we believe it. So the adjustment to self, to that, is to remember that we are all, each and every one of us, perfect children of the Most High. Each and every one of us has been made for exactly who we are. Each of us. The Reverend Trish Hall, uh, great uh, science of my minister in the Lower 48, and I came across this quote, and I think she just nailed it. She said, as spirit, we arrive in this world seeking confirmation of what our hearts already know. We are one with and inseparable from spirit, our indivisible essence. We are one with spirit, our indivisible essence. Second adjustment is the adjustment of the family. Now, this is not just our immediate family, our you know parents, brothers, uncles, sisters, or our kids. It's not just our immediate family. It's our larger extended family. It consists of our friends and our business associates, uh, our fellow congregants here at the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, that big of a family that we adjust to. And the adjustment in terms of family is to embrace the awareness that we live in a reciprocal universe. Well, what do I mean by that? It's very simple. What we put forth out into the universe is what comes back to us. If we go out into the world with love and peace and harmony in our, in our hearts, then that is what is shown back to us. If we approach the world with fear, and trepidation, the world comes back to us with fear and trepidation. If we are distrusting of others, people don't trust us. But if we are generous and helpful, people tend to be generous and helpful to us. What we put out comes back. I think I have a picture here, and I've got a, a story, it's an example of this. And this was just last week, called Looking Out for One Another. There they are, the two pictures. Um, trust your gut. How many times have we all heard that advice? When Shonda Lemon, she's the lady on the left, she's a mail carrier in Chicago, noticed a senior citizen on her route, hadn't picked up her mail in a few days, her gut told her that something was wrong. Lemon often greeted Helen Iwanski, 89 during her day. Iwanski would even sometimes attach 
candy to her outgoing mail as a way of thanking Lemon for her work. After she noticed Iwanski's absence, Lemon called the police to ask for a well-being check. When the police entered the house, they found Iwanski on the floor, where she had fallen and unable to move for several days. Luckily, after a hospital stay, Iwanski is on the mend, and her family says that she calls the postal worker her angel. Lemon says she's relieved that the older woman is going to be okay. This is her quote. Each person has an intricate part in your life, and you never know how important they may be. What we put forth in the universe is what comes back to us. And if we have the courage, the boldness, to be kind and generous and to help one another, life can be wonderful. The adjustment of society, our third adjustment. Each of us, each of us, are unique. And each of us has been made perfect in their own way, and we're all unique. And we each have our own challenges. We each have our own opportunities. We each have our own life to live. Sometimes we don't do a particularly good job. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we err. Our job is to have compassion for one another. And the adjustment here is to see beyond the behavior of others and to see them as the perfect children of God that they are and recognize that they are doing the best job they can with what they've got in this moment and it may not measure up to what we think they ought to be doing. The last adjustment that we can make is the adjustment of the universe. Now this is the, the biggest one. We think, wow, how are we going to affect the entire universe? I think that we have a tendency within each of us to demonize people who are different than us, whether it be through their skin color, their religion, the way they live their lives, their practices, how they go about this thing called life. And if they're different from us, we tend to stay away from them. We don't want to be around them. And sometimes we assume the role of victim. We can be a victim of circumstance. We can be a victim of other people. Now, our adjustment to that is to sense that divine presence in everything. Ernest Holmes once wrote, once wrote, Sensing the divine presence in everything is the essence of love and givingness. Sensing the divine presence in everything is the essence of love and givingness. Sometimes I wonder if man's greatest fear is the uncertainty of the hereafter. The adjustment here is to recognize the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. In that radio broadcast, Ernest Holmes wrote, we must come to believe that we not only have a soul, we must also sense that this soul is immortal, eternal, deathless. If we are some part of the infinite, then we are necessary to it, and it could not destroy any part of itself. I don't know about for you, but that is so simple and so clear to me. This infinite presence has created us. And so we are a part of it. And it would make no sense for that infinite presence to make something and destroy it. I believe that I, our souls, this part of us that is not physical, not simply mental, it is something greater than that even, lives on and on in different realms at different times. Conclusion today, the thing that I wanna, want you to take away, 
What is the common thread that is tying together these adjustments? What's the common thing between all four of these adjustments? I'll tell you, it's one word, love. Love is the greatest healer. Love of self, love of one another, and love of spirit. And when we can step into that place where we truly, truly love ourselves, it empowers us to be able to love others, regardless of the things that we may assume that they have done to hurt us. Or maybe they have hurt us. We can see beyond that behavior and know that they, just like us, are human beings in this plane at this time doing the best job they can with what they've got. And sometimes they come up short. And the love of the Spirit, recognizing that that infinite presence is indeed within each and every one of us. David Alexander, and I'm not even sure where he is now. He was well, the senior minister at a big center in Portland, and I think now he's moved in the lower 48. But he once wrote, and th this sounds so profound to me. I believe what we need is what Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called a creative maladjustment. In addition to getting right with our love essence, as Holmes suggests, we also need to decolonize our social conditioning that keeps in place a world that works for very few of us. We need a creative maladjustment to the hypnotic tones of the world so that we refuse to normalize inequity, discrimination, injustice, lack, and limitation. Because after all, love is our essence. We are one with a power greater than we are. And so is everyone we meet. Travel well. And so it is with this feeling of our oneness with one another. With this feeling of the love that connects all of us. I invite my colleagues, the practitioners, to join me in holding our congregation, our city, our state, our nation, our globe, and everything in it, everyone, in love and light. And we simply recognize that as we go through life, we are presented with opportunities to learn. And sometimes we have to take the lesson twice or three times or more. But behind all of that, there is a power, there is a presence that we call life, that we call God, we call spirit. And that spirit is indeed for us. It is guiding us through those tough times. And we recognize that even though in this world of appearance, there appears to be not enoughness, not enough money, not enough land, not enough anything. When in truth we live in an abundant universe, a universe that is so vast, so enormous, that we can have anything and everything we want. Even though there is this thing called disease, COVID-19, there is something that is greater than COVID-19 and that is that infinite spirit. It is that infinite intelligence. It is that intelligence which allows us to create a vaccine. It is that intelligence which allows us to do things like wear masks and keep our distance so we don't spread it. It allows us to take the steps that it needs to get away from this disease and to live lives that are filled with joy and compassion. allows us to know that we live in a world a common thread of which is love. Love for one another, love for ourselves, and love for that infinite presence. And so we just give thanks. We give thanks for our awareness of that infinite presence in our lives. And now we can just step back and we can allow that infinite presence to carry us through the difficult times. We give thanks, we let it go, we let it be. And so it is.
Thank you, Jessica. Wow. We are so blessed. Now is the time in the service where we are afforded the opportunity to participate in one of our spiritual practices, that being the practice of circulation. Just as what we put forth into the universe and our thoughts and our ideas returns to us, so too this holds true for finances and material things. Hmm. When we can step into a world where we feel confident enough to be generous, the universe pays it back. Uh, I'd like to recognize some of the people that are with us today. Kim Stoltz and Dane, Trevor Wolf, Linda and Midnight, Tiffany, Lynn and Marion, Judith, Judith Wolf, Judy Wolf, and I must be Judith Mack, Robert, Neil is with us today. Wow, we don't have Neil. That's amazing. <laughs> But Bob, Bob and Amy do an awesome, awesome job. Thank you guys so much. Uh, oh, Chris Bauman. That is Jessica's mom is with us today. So here, here's to mom. Uh, Rochelle, Ann Tompkins, Cindy Hensley, Shelly Jean, Angela, Kate Nixon, Heather Eldred is with us today. Barbara Taylor, Cynthia George, Colleen, Jane Domier. Don't know Jane. Keith Montgomery. And I know there's a bunch on there that I don't see, and it's, I, I don't know how all this works, but to everyone that's watching, watching today, thank you for, for joining us. I also want to thank Nanetta for the beautiful card that she sent. And during this time, last week as I was watching, I was in the chat room, and when they were doing a collection, up popped this little link. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try, even though you know, I've got my own uh, tithing things set up. It's an automatic withdrawal. I'm going to try it anyway. So I clicked on that baby and that was as easy as could be. All you have to do is click on that. Now you have to put in your whole credit card number because we don't keep anything anywhere of it. It's not maintained in anything. Um, so if we get hacked by a boogeyman, he's not going to find anything because we don't have any credit cards. So. Um, <laughs> Now that we would have to see the God in that. You know? But it's given us the opportunity to allow you to put in your credit card number each week. But it's, it's easy, it's short, it's done. And I was done before the song was done. So I could listen to Jessica singing. It was awesome. And I was done before the song was done. So that's what we have. So, uh, join me in our affirmation today. Divine love. Through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. Tapping into that light, the eternal goodness of life for all, knowing that God is for us, let us commit to recognizing the love in all things, embracing our freedom to choose, to choose life, choose oneness, to choose love. As we navigate through this week, let us make the necessary adjustments for our lives so we can continue to bring in blessings, loving ourselves and showing compassion through each and every moment. Giving thanks in advance for that oneness. We let it go. We let it be. And so it is. So it is. And our affirmation for today. I am love. I am love. I give love freely. I give love freely. I deserve love fully. 
I deserve love fully. I see only love. I see only love. And so it is. And so it is.